A special thank you to Glenn Kramer, Mark Ware, Byron Colley, Steve Dix, Bill Schreiber, Christopher Hunt, Felix Rodriguez, James Rogers, Norman Fair, Daniel Mayer, Kyle Sarpolis, Leland Lampkins, Lonnie Meisner, Michael Douglas, Paul Wood, Michael Scott, Samuel Draney, and Tom Champion. Well, this is a, a Slockar Fun special edition or special feature, something like that. I haven't come up with a name for it yet. Um, and I'm assuming my, my lavalier is working because I'm trying to overcome the uh, dryer in the background. <laughs> because this is a uh, room that has a washer and dryer in it. Yeah, you know. We are not at the studio. This is my little corner of the world slot car racing i mean my tracks over here and my work areas up here and what we're going to do is we're going to take this plastic accurate accurate models uh m8a <laughs> mclaren from 1970 and turn this into a 124 scale slot car to race in the hard body races right races the hard body races at buena park raceway uh, I don't know if that's called Checkpoint 2, but I, I it might, but uh, point apart. We'll be racing there with some pretty cool people. Eddie Shore, Keith Tanaka, Tim Carrera, and a few other greats. So I'm sure they will eat me up alive because I'm new. I haven't done this type of 124 scale uh, racing um, since I was a kid. I did build my own cars back then, and with retro, ret, ret, boy, what is wrong with my accent today? I'm trying to sound like American. No, I am an American. <laughs> so, hard body racing at Buena Park is retro, and therefore, I need to build my own frame. And I can build any way I want as long as they stick to the rules and the dimensions and the right tires and all that stuff. But I am following uh, under Eddie's, that's my dog banging into the tripod, Eddie Shore's uh, guidance. I am using uh, Hector Gonzalez, his tutorial that you can purchase for $20 from Keith Tanaka. And on it, they show you blow by blow how to build a frame. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you building the frame, but I'm not going to instruct you how to do it. If you want to do that, you got to go uh, talk to Keith Tanaka. And uh, I can put a link at the end of this video to show you. Because in this part today, um, and there will be several parts where I'm going to cut them together, I'm going to show uh just some of the stuff I'm going to have to do to make this work. I've got to use some... Uh, flat framework brass work brass which is down here and turn this into a frame this is some pretty heavy stuff it's uh it's 0.32 so uh and this is a four by ten inch sheet and this is what we're going to use for the, the pan of the frame so uh, and then this so far what i've done is i i the pieces together now the thing is with this particular model it was designed to be a model that's built just like the real car therefore as you know some of you know with with uh mclaren's the front end comes off the rear end comes off and the doors pop out and that leaves you the bottom frame here so the car is built that way so i had to glue all these parts together and secure them including the intake and you can see how that all looks and then what we do is take the dremel tool and cut all this away and then i'm going to iron out yes iron out the curve here flat so that uh, uh you, you soften the plastic and get it pretty pretty flat which i've never done before it's gonna be scary but there's a tutorial online by hector how to do that and then i mean i can fit the frame to it but as it turns out this is exactly three inches across so it's going to be very easy to keep the center line on the frame and stuff so i'm blah 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 too much but i'm going to start doing some of this and show you 
little bits and pieces of how I do this uh, for your interest. And if you really want to get into it, you want to come down and race with us, uh, I'll put up some links. Okay, so let's get going. So um, here you can see what's called a warm Warmac uh, bracket, unibracket it's called. Sorry if I stop and think for a moment because that's what I have to do to get all this right. Down here, I have most of the parts and most of the main tools I'm going to need to do this job. And I did have to get some very um, specific tools to use, uh, things that Hector recommended highly, such as uh, this one, which I got from Micromark, which is, uh, he calls a, a jeweler's square, but it, uh, it's got a lot of oil on it. I guess they don't want the rust, but... Uh, this square is very heavy duty and you can get things really true and square and buttered up very well with it. So that's something I will be using. Uh, another tool that he highly recommends is uh, lineman's uh, pliers, which I've never tried before for bending. I have a wire bender. It does not do what these do. These make perfect right angle bends in piano wire like I've never seen before. So that's another tool. Um, I did get, uh, uh, a scriber so I can scribe the brass so I can get the exact center line. You need to have things like these to get things precise, uh, which I have. And I basically, everything I didn't have, I got and that he recommended because I want to do this right, including this. And these are 409s uh, and these will cut through brass very well. And this is, of course, the Dremel extension so that you have better control than having that big old thing in your hand and trying to do a really even nice cut. So this is a very welcome addition to my tool collection. I thought I had one, but as it turns out, I didn't. So here's the motor. And as you can see, it's, uh, oh, Rosie's going to go into her little house underneath the slot car track and lay down. There you go, Rosie. You got it. Just lay down. Good job. Good job. Good job. My dog's comfort it comes before anything in my world. So, all right. So you can see how perfectly uh, this fits in. Um, I could probably get closer. And get more light on it. Okay. So you can see how these holes line up rather perfectly, I think. Um, it's hard to tell looking at the iPhone and this is where the bearings go. This is a lower setting, a higher setting, uh, clearance wise for the ground. And I do have the screws, which hold that motor in rather perfectly. And it's even got a little notch there for your pole. And these are the motors we have to use. And this is the retro ego, uh, 606. Is it? I think it is. Um, so yeah, so I'll be using that of course. And the first thing he wants me to do is to, oh yes, and you need a building jig. And these are not cheap, I warn you, but it's really a good investment. It includes all the pegs and uh, alignment blocks and everything else. It's a really good tool to have. You can see all the markings on it. Um, I turn sideways. So I'm going to go check and see what the first thing is he wants us to do. So you can see why this is so important to have this... Uh, this jeweler's square. Um, I needed to mark this piece of brass in one and one sixteenth. And using this uh, Sharpie, I did that. And now I have to mark exactly half in it. And then I'm going to scribe that because that will line up with this. So uh, hopefully I'm not giving too much away here. But because um, I want you guys, if you want to do this, to buy their. Um, tutorial so and now I'm going to cut this with this 409 I'm going to cut towards the outside line and I don't think I did a good job on that. We'll see. I 
I may have. And you can see how easy it was for me to control. So, and then I'm going to check it. And it is exactly 1 16th. So I did pretty good. That's the first time I've used that tool to do that. I'm very pleased at how well those 409 Dremel discs really work to, to cut that. So now I got to mark the center line. And uh, then I'm going to do some soldering and stuff with piano wire. And when I come back, I'll show you what that all looks like. Okay, I've been working on this almost all day. I mean, for hours and I found a lot of problems even though my soldering gun is very not gun sorry station goes up to a lot of wattage I mean it's really a powerful one uh, this is very thick brass and if it's cold it absorbs so you have to tack this stuff and using the stay um, stay clean as I have and everything else I found a lot of difficulties getting it to stick uh, and so the soldering is not that clean, but you know, that's part of the deal. But you can see the movement here up and down and right and left. It's not a lot, but it will forward and back. See that movement? And so that's your motor pod. So it's not just stiff. Um, and that's, uh, that's Hector's design. Now, of course, the motor will go right in here. like so and then the uh, crown gear evidently will fit right here and go down inside that slot I think you can see that and of course the axle comes out here and so this took the most time to do uh, I have to say this this took a lot of time to do uh, especially because I have never done it before so um, yeah <laughs> It was, it was trying and, and, you know, it took patience and I, next time I do it, I know I can do it better. Now, um, the other thing is, is I've got to uh, cut insets here and inset here for the, for the tires. Uh, and then I have to cut another opening here and make the uh, tongue for the uh, slot car, uh, for the slot flag or slot guide, if you will. So some people call them flags. So uh, that's that's as far as I'm going to go today. Uh, the tutorial has been very very helpful. It, it truly has been, and uh, this this really I could not have done this without it. I mean, also you know it's very well designed. This little uh, bracket you can see how uh, well that that notch from the pole fits right into that notch. So it's very precise, very nice. It, you know, one thing's for sure about it. It's dead center. <laughs> you know, I can tell it's dead center because I can see the center line that I scored in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a center line scored in. There's another one there. And it's straight all the way. And it's square because I had that wonderful uh, tool that I learned about from, from Hector. And uh, that was this tool here. So we know we're square. We know we're square. You know, it's it's really an invaluable tool. And if you're going to do this kind of work, I've got clean. It looks from underneath. Wow. Everything's even and nice. Uh, I'm really pleased. I don't like the soldering. I could have done better on that. But I'm learning now that you basically, when that tip is hot, you just hit it and, it, you know, you, you tack it. And that's where I was uh, going wrong. But for now, hey, not bad. Okay, I've been working on this for a couple of days. I haven't showed you everything because, again, if you want to do this, you should have to pay for the tutorial the way I did. So uh, I've been using, I've just started using uh, the jig, and the reason for that is, and it's not lined up right now, I'm seeing, but I'm going to line that up in a second, is um, because I'm going to... Uh, Okay, I need to move this back to here. That line right there, you see, that is for, um, and again, this is why I wish I had the tripod on me right now. <laughs> I don't, I need to get that out of there. There, that's better. Um, so this is, this axle here, they give you with this jig as a complete package. And the reason you use this is to help line up things. 
Uh, obviously, I'm not going to have a wheelbase that wide. I think it's obvious. Um, but that is where the wheels do go and or will go. And uh, if I put this right over here, you can see it's lined up pretty well. So, um, so this piece of wire here, I bent according to Hector's uh, wishes <laughs> in his tutorial. And I have to bend it out here flat. And the way that we do that, we put this in like so, and then uh, at the right angle, and then bend, make a mark and bend both of these in here to be parallel to this axle and then solder it in. And that's what I have to do. And also I got to cut out the wheel openings here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the bronze uh, bushings and uh, brushes, uh, brushes, bearings, oil light bearings. I'm going to put them in here. I'm going to braze them in. And that brings me to something else and put in the motor, the like ground gear and all that stuff. I got this and it's a, a Weller. And Scott up at uh, PCH Slot Cars, which is located, hang on. And Scott at PCH uh, Slot Cars Hobbies, his, his um, shop is, I walk to from my shop. Amazing, isn't it? So, uh, and he was very helpful. And he told, I told him what was going on when I was soldering this. I was having a hard time. This is allegedly goes up to, you know, 875 degrees. It's not hot enough. That goes up to 1100 and it does it in a hurry. And it's got a big fat tip on it. And I tell you, he told me to make all the difference in the world. That's the one he uses. And I'm here to tell you it did. It immediately made a difference. And now all my soldering is made much easier. So you really need to have one of those. Freeze frame, turn it upside down. <laughs> um, also, this is the seat that came with the model kit for the McLaren. And my my good old buddy, boy, they had a problem with that seat. It didn't cast out right. Is that how it is? The real seat, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of odd. Um, Mark, who uh, used to have immense miniatures. I don't know that he's going to be doing anymore, but he made the best drivers you've ever seen for slot cars look how well that fits in there and then of course he sent me a few different uh heads this is the one on the left that i'm going to use because that's actually accurate to 1971 and he knew that but he didn't know if i might want to do uh something a bit more modern because they do still race those cars for fun and that's the arms now, uh, these are real different looking than his usual stuff, I'm noticing. So maybe he's about going to go back into production. But you see how well detailed these are. Um, and he gave me uh, this version, too. And that's, yeah, Mark Tyler, who I worked with in the movie business and is an old friend. And we used to make jokes about my Fiat. <laughs> I used to drive to work every day while we were working on Ghostbusters and other films. Uh, but no, his stuff's really a class act and people are always asking me, you know, where did you get the driver? Oh my God, that's so incredible. Here's another one, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I thought it'd be really cool to have those in this as opposed to one of those vacuum form things. So, and, and when I put it in the seat, I just couldn't even believe how well it fits. So that's good news. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a few more things. I'll come back and show you. Okay, it's uh, it's a running car. Uh, I can't go very far on this track. It is working well. Um, I do need more silicone uh, wire. This is not long enough. I'm just going to go get a roll. Um, I, when I got it in my little package, I thought, that's not going to be enough. And they don't know what size car I'm building exactly. So, uh, But that's okay, because it's, it's good enough to do this. Um, <laughs> Now, I can't run it very far. Whoa. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's working fine. I don't want to go around that corner because over there I'll get stuck. But uh, as a drag racer... Oh, sorry, Rosie. <laughs> it's uh, it's smooth. It's quiet. Um, I get down here. I'm not going full throttle. 
but it's uh it's working so uh i'm very pleased with my first one it's not as pretty as i'd like it to be but overall it's pretty darn good so um and i couldn't have done it without uh keith uh and hector uh, having that nice tutorial um so i knew how to do this it really winds up too when i i don't have it on the tripod right now uh but when it's at full throttle it's really screaming so and it has problems on this track because this is a uh you know 137 scale track It's doing very well. So, and the wheels are turning and everything, except for this wheel over here, which I've got to tweak some more and get down right. But it's doing very well. And it didn't take that long to build. And being the first time I've ever done this, uh, we're going to see if I can get the body on. So, the body does clear everything. So, that's good. I have some problems with the batter with the body uh fitting right though the frame to the body uh the frame should really curve up uh i guess i don't know i have to work on that and figure out what i can do whether i can bend the front uh the back's okay but you can see how low it's sitting and i'm not sure what hector did on his but i may have to put a different body on this hopefully i can find something that'll fit over this frame that's really flat so, oh, bit by bit, it's starting to fit. You can see the frame is starting to match up. It'll match up better once I cut some of this stuff, which I scored and bent forward to flatten it. Now I gotta cut some off to drop it. So this comes down a little bit further, uh, but it's really starting to work really well. I had to cut out the vent there. Eventually I'll replace that with a black screen. Uh, and you can see when I press down, it's going to fit really well. I have to add a piece going across here. Uh, tweak, tweak, tweak. This hangs down really low, but so does that. And the real card goes that way. So I'm gonna put some uh, dark details back underneath the side, but hey, it's really, really coming along very well. I ended up bending and tweaking the front frame and when I did, unfortunately, it, it broke loose the motor pod. I had to re-solder it, but it's fine. And in fact, now, also, um, I lowered this so it's up higher. Because every car is different. So now it's sitting level all the way around. I'm going to try it on the track, see how it runs. But I bet it runs a lot better. So I really love it when I see the front wheels and the back wheels both turning uh, on all sides uh, these are nice and level um, I also love the articulation this rocks this way and moves forward and back as well as does the motor pod which we you know in these cars uh, that we race uh, really help the handling on them because the whole motor pod is loose so effectively what uh, Hector has done is he's created the same sort of uh, movement and articulation by having a separate rear pod and a forward pod, and it really works well. Okay, we're at the studio today. Uh, I don't normally work in slot cars at the studio, but I am at the studio, and um, I'm working on the body. And of course, this body is in all the sections the actual McLaren is in, and so. Uh, oh, that was, anyway, what I've been doing is uh, I put fiberglass behind the sections because there's an open door section and the lower section which attaches to the frame uh, that the body, main body lifts off of and then the body comes off at that seam there and the doors and the front comes off. So these are all going to go flying apart in a bad crash. So what I did is I reinforced them with fiberglass cloth, some... Um, Saran wrap around my finger, and I took some medium CA. This is Jet, uh, or Zappagap. Yeah, Zappagap, which is really one of the best. Medium, it's not real thin, it's not real thick. And worked it in there just the way you mix in uh, fiberglass. Uh, well, uh, 
epoxy resin over fiberglass. So it's a very similar technique, except it's a lot faster and it's very strong. These parts will not snap off now. Now, the way I uh, scored the, the under curve under here from the back and then folded it forward, left a crease that's not on a real uh, car. So I filled it in with this, which is an Evercoat uh, kind of a metal glaze. This is the stuff for boats, but it works well. And they had it locally at, at my uh, Marine, West Marine. I get epoxies and everything there. And what I'm gonna do before this gets really hard is sand that down, it'll smooth it all over. Then I'm gonna put a coat of primer on this whole thing. Now I have been, you know, carving out things and stuff to make it fit better onto the frame. And some of you were asking about Mark Tyler. He is not going to go into production on the drivers, unfortunately, at least not anytime too soon. As you can see, he's wearing a scarf over his mouth. Uh, and, these are sculptures that he does, but then he 3D prints them with a resin printer. So there's no ripples, no lines. This thing is perfectly smooth and it went together in a few seconds. Um, I've just painted it white for now. Uh, just let that Tamiya primer dry and then I can hand paint the rest of it, but I'm not gonna do that today. I just wanna get that driver sitting in the car, which uh, he will go right about here and uh, and then put, when I put the body over, and I test it tomorrow at Stephen Farr Jones at our next slot car race in Burbank. Or is that Glendale? I think it's Glendale. <laughs> uh, I get to test it there because this track will handle 124th and I'll actually be able to get all the way around the track. So this is my chance to test the car with the body on, not finished. Uh, before I go to Buena Park, uh, the last, Sunday or the third Sunday of May. Well, my reinforcing and straightening the sides worked very well. You can see I uh, sanded down the Evercoat and uh, we're gonna put some primer on this before I do anything else to see if I need to do any more filling with some red putty, which I probably will. I've also drilled the holes for the screws that I'm gonna use to hold on uh, this. Uh, to there and you can see I marked two holes and tried to drill one but my drill bits very dull the sharp ones are at home So I have to do this at home, but I'll have two holes in there And then this will just fit down over like so rather well and uh, I'll just have the two bolts there. I'll paint them the same color as the rest of the car um, The frames fitting really level and even to um, to this and these I had to add back because the actual car has those uh, insets like that. I did it with styrene. I used the existing ones that were cut off slightly to get things to fit and then put that back over, blended it in and sanded it. Um, so, and you can see we've got a really good fit the front end as well on the frame. So we're good. The, the heights are just about right. Um, the wheels are not sticking outside the body, which is part of the rules. I have really cramped space in there, but it's working out really well. And then it'll look really cool when this guy is sitting in there. Sitting up a little high right now because of the seat. I can't get him in the seat. There he goes. Something like that, so it'll be very cool. Nice thing is that this is almost a complete driver by the time the steering wheel is here and the other details of the cockpit. It'll look really nice in there. Thank you, Mark. Tyler. Head slightly turned, so he's kind of looking. I always like to give it a little bit of movement. And here we are in the paint booth that isn't working. <laughs> you can see how well the sides blended down. And there is just slightly a curve at the bottom to give it that feeling that the actual car had. But I think everything worked out very well. It did not take that long. I'm using Tamiya white primer, which really is the only thing to use in my opinion. Yes, a can of that costs $12. But I used uh, earlier today uh, some rust on a model I'm building for a client that's flat white, and I regretted it. It just, it splattered, it, it, it gave texture and everything else, you know, so saving, uh, 
six bucks really didn't pay off very well. So, um, yeah, this just looks fantastic. I couldn't have hoped for better. So when I get home, I can drill those holes into the brass and put some screws in, which reminds me I need to find the screws. I have lots of screws here. Um, but this is really coming along very well, and I'm very pleased. So the body looks fantastic considering all the hacking and hewing I had to do to it. So, uh, but you know, this all comes with uh, 48, 49, 50 years, roughly <laughs> professional modeling. So, but still, <laughs> I've done some ugly stuff in my time. Okay. That uh, is as far as we get. This little guess would be the end of part one. And you didn't get to see everything because I really want you to get, I really want you to be able to uh, get Gonzo, Hector Gonzalez, his uh, tutorial because it really helped me. And even though he was doing it for a Porsche, Porsche LM car, uh, it worked for this. I found that following it so exactly that I ran into some problems with this, but I was easily able to adapt it to this body. Um, of course, the width from the start will always uh, was correct, and that's my dog. So that's it. Uh, it's, it's great. And if you want to build cars like this for hard body racing, um, contact Keith Tanaka, um, and uh, he'll help you. Uh, see you next week. Right when they need a marshal. Watch all the lights. I'm watch busy. Watch, 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 watch out. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> hey, isn't that the prettiest car on the track? Can I run into it? Yeah. It's like unfinished uh, God, these are so much bigger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Half again. This car is actually doing very well. It's almost half again in trade, right? From 132 to 124. Nah, I like the way. No, uh, oh, one. there's a magnet. Okay, because yeah, that's that, that I was working. I, I was telling everyone to stick. I was telling everyone to on track record by three tips. Well, I, I think it's a good proof of concept. Oh, shh. Somebody tell me. All right. I'm going to put a magnet out. And I'll do what I got on. All right, you can stop now. I think oh, I got, I'm sorry. I, I got enough carnage. I'm using